Welcome back to another episode from the Optimal Body Podcast. I'm Doc Jen. And I'm Dr. Tom. And today we're talking about cervicogenic headaches. What is going on with this and how can you help it? Now, this is actually based on a recommendation from you. So we need to hear what you want to hear so that we can continue to educate and provide exactly what you want. So please let us know in the comments, are there other areas of the body that you feel like we haven't covered yet or you've been curious about? What does the research say? What exercises can you do? Drop it below. We want to help you out. And don't forget to subscribe because we have so many more of these podcasts, but also just other videos that can help with just exercises based on what you need within your body. Cervicogenic headaches. We did a previous episode on tension headaches, which they have similarities. Some people mm -hmm. kind of classify tension headaches as a type of a cervicogenic headache, but cervicogenic headache, that word is a mouthful in general, but <laughs> it really just means a headache that has to do with something originating from the neck or the cervical region of our spine, which is our neck. What can we do to start to address this? And I think what you're going to learn from us is that though there are protocols that can help, you know, there's no one size fits all. So we want to talk about all the possibilities of what you can really include to start to help your body. So what's going on in the neck that causes us or contributes mm -hmm. to these headaches? And this is where we're generally talking about some sort of stability or mobility issue. They tend to go hand in hand when we're talking about our neck muscles. If we have a mobility issue or if we feel instability, our neck muscles will kind of tighten down mm -hmm. to find some stability to make us feel like we have safety and stability in our neck, which then causes other problems. I would say the first line of treatment you should go to is physical therapy. Of course, we're physical therapists. We're going to say that, right? Yeah. But before you turn to pain management in, in terms of drugs or Botox or other treatments that can be helpful can we look at what can i do physically in my body because we're not just looking at these deep neck flexors and chin tucks we're going to talk about a lot more exercises that can help and bring awareness to what's happening that could be contributing to this headache but physical therapy i think first line of treatment and then when we're looking at the effectiveness of treatments they actually found is that manipulative therapy so thinking of going to get that neck manipulation with therapeutic exercise has been shown to have some benefit we have a full episode on manipulations and adjustments talking that's about really what they're doing yeah talking about what they're doing and a lot of people will think that oh physical therapists they don't like adjustments that's what chiropractors do like in most states physical therapists are trained in and allowed to do yep. high velocity manipulations it's what we call it because chiropractors didn't want us to also call it adjustments or something <laughs> yeah, like that it's i don't know probably a legal thing same thing <laughs> but really you know similar if not the same techniques and we're getting the same result in the body which is yes relaxation, release of endorphins. It helps all of those tight muscles just let go a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so when we get that release or the relaxation that we're looking for with a manipulation technique, then it allows us to do more exercise with less pain or exactly. with less symptoms. And again, we're looking at like it being more of a neural stimulation um, when we're getting that manipulative treatment. It's not realigning your cervical spine. It's not putting anything back into place. Again, go listen to our episode to hear and understand more about manipulation and adjustment. But if it's helping you get back to exercise, like like that's that's the key. That's what we really want to look at. We have to go about treatment slowly because if you're suddenly like, give me the most, do all these things, give me all these exercises, it can actually flare you up a little bit more. And because you're doing more new exercise, you're going to be putting strain and stress on those muscles in a way that they may not have felt in a long time. So you really have to be careful with the rate at which you move with therapy, and that's kind of been uh, pointed out in some of the research as well, is that just moving slowly through this progressive treatment, and that's why sometimes working with a physical therapist is best because you get the treatment based on what you need at the time and how your body progresses, because everyone progresses a little differently. And being able to go at a slower rate, a slower pace really help just give you better outcomes in reducing the, that headache. It's just like working out in any capacity, when you start something new, you're going to have some degree of soreness. You're going to be mm -hmm. feeling new things. And so yes. regardless of how slowly you start, if you start doing some deep cervical flexion, you know, muscle training or muscle endurance training, that might be irritating to some degree in the neck. And so, mm -hmm. again, this is why it's important to be with a physical therapist so that when you come back and say, oh, I actually like felt worse headaches for mm -hmm. a day 
you know, day and a half after we did that, the therapist can put that at ease and say, that's okay. We're asking your neck to work. We're asking your neck to do different things. You're in the most irritable state you're probably going to be in, but we need to keep this training. We need to keep going down this road, but we might just adjust based yeah, on adjust how your body reacted and they actually found that like a lot of aerobic type exercise can help in general with headache relief so just getting outside and walking more just going on different machines if that's what you prefer to do some biking or to do some elliptical work like how can i get a little bit more aerobic and just movement throughout my body getting the blood flowing a little bit more maybe you've had headaches so you haven't wanted to move a lot they've found that just doing aerobic type exercise can be really beneficial if it's just headache based and it's not necessarily cervicogenic based combined treatment not just like one thing and this is what another study kind of looked at they looked at not only doing manipulation therapy but doing motor control exercises so we're going to work on a little bit more coordination around how your shoulder muscles and your neck kind of work together putting all of that together they found that there was 10 percent more participants reported greater than 50 percent relief or complete relief of headache when treated with that combined intervention over no physical therapy at all. So I think it's really cool to see how effective it is at reducing headache when we're not only just looking at deep neck flexors and stretching, but we're looking and, and not just doing manipulation alone, but how are we combining that with how the shoulders and the shoulder blades and the neck all work together in coordination and how can we get that all programming a little bit more so that we can start to make progress and how we're feeling throughout our entire neck all the way up into that headache and making that long-term change that was recorded also at 12 months follow-up like how long did it last and they, they were still lasting benefits at 12 months. Anytime we're talking about pain, you know, headaches included, this is a neurological thing, yes. especially headaches. This is where we use more of the biopsychosocial model. We just talked more about the bio, the biomechanic, the biological with the muscles, but the psychological and the social components. Yes, so like important. What types of stress are happening in mm -hmm. our life? Are we getting good enough sleep? I had a couple tough nights sleep because our son got me up really early, <laughs> just like the last couple days. And I had a headache all day long yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I associated that with like not getting enough sleep. And I got a decent night's sleep tonight and headaches are gone, you know? And so it's like trying to focus in on some of the other things in life that you think might be out of balance. Am I drinking enough water? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I mentioned stress, but it's like, are there relationships in your life that seem like they're adding a lot more onto your plate? Uh, is work really overwhelming you? And this is where we saw other studies or research talking about the importance of breath work. Yeah, you know, that's di something diaphragmatic breathing. Diaphragmatic breathing. That's something that we always go to. And properly diaphragmatically breathing and properly using your breath to downregulate your nervous system can be an absolute game changer mm -hmm. in the amount of stress or perception of stress. Like mm -hmm. the stress, of course, externally doesn't disappear, <laughs> but it can really calm down that sympathetic drive, that fight or flight drive in our body and also help our muscles relax a little bit more. So mm -hmm. breath can be so valuable as a tool in helping with these headaches. And what's really cool, I got to do a one-on-one -on -one session with someone who had won something, a part of within Gen Health. And she had a great reduction within her headaches uh, doing the neck and upper back plan on Gen Health, but she still had some remaining symptoms. And she was going to a physical therapist as well, but some of those strengthening exercises would actually flare her up even more, which is kind of what we talked about, how mm -hmm. slow it needs to go. But what I really looked at with her was starting from the basics. Like, okay, just come in front of, we were on Zoom, come in front of the screen, take a, a couple deep breaths, let me know what you see. And her taking a couple deep breaths, she was using her neck muscles to breathe. Because as she took those deep breaths, her shoulders were immediately going up and it was almost impossible for her to keep her shoulders relaxed the entire time and only expand from the rib cage. So this only highlights even more, not only is it a down regulatory effect that we're looking at with breathing, but we're trying to make sure that we're not turning on unnecessary muscles that shouldn't be turned on throughout the day. The only time we want to use our neck muscles when we're breathing is if we're doing high level activity and really going for a sport type of play. Otherwise, throughout the day, when we're breathing, our shoulders should be relaxed. If someone tells you to take a deep breath, your shoulders should not raise. And that is the misconception with when people say, take a deep breath and relax, your shoulders go up to your ears. We're using accessory muscles that shouldn't necessarily be in place. So I think that 
is usually a missing link that people don't think about, but I liked some of the other stuff that we looked at in research as well. Not only looking at diaphragmatic breathing playing a role, but also postural awareness. So just being aware of our posture throughout the day. We're not going to have perfect posture throughout the day. We've also posture, done an episode on posture. Yes, and it what we changes think about, yeah, it movement. What it we moves. think about that, how that should look throughout the day. <laughs> With that said, having a general sense of awareness of how to hold your, your head over your body more so throughout the day and how we kind of find that balance within ourselves rather than forcing it. But what exercises do I need to do? Do I need to open up my upper back more? Do I need to open up my chest and my my pecs? Maybe they're so tight and rigid that it's pulling my head. And so me trying to force a good posture isn't going to happen. So what do I need to do to help move that forward? You know, I think that's really important. How can we every 30 minutes, 30 or 40 minutes when we are working throughout the day have like a reminder whether it's a physical reminder on our phone saying hey get up and do a little movement and i just said do the opposite of what you're doing open up your back rotate through your back open your chest and then get back to work and if you do that every 30 minutes you're doing it 12 to 16 to 20 times throughout the day and that's going to start having a much larger impact on our nervous system than doing a couple exercises once a day. Mm -hmm. Strengthening those deep neck flexors. And there's different ways that you can progress this in clinic, specifically looking at using like a, a blood pressure cuff um, to kind of measure how much pressure how you're putting in and how hard you're, you know, how strong those muscles are. We have different kinds of progressions on Gen Health where we start in sitting where it's not a lot of ton of pressure and then we go to laying on your back and then we have different progressions from there where you don't have to use something, but it you're going to feel the progression as you continue um, yeah. working on it. But there's different ways that you can progress to really continue to strengthen so that, again, it's not something that you have to be throughout the day thinking, oh, let me chin tuck. But it's like if I make those muscles strong, in general, my head and my brain is gonna have more awareness of how to hold my head there naturally. And that's really what we're looking at. And then looking at dynamic exercises, isometric exercises, exercises that strengthen all along the upper body. And I think it's really important to note, and this is something we do in Gen Health and the neck and upper back plan as well. When we're talking about strengthening our sh around our shoulder blades or around our shoulders, we're looking at the core as well. Like your core, plays a role all the way up into our shoulder blades. Our entire trunk, our entire pillar should really play a role in how that's breathing, moving and functioning together. So we can't look at just the neck and shoulders and say, let me just strengthen here. But I get to look at the entire picture, that entire pillar and how that's moving, breathing and functioning and coordinating together in order to know that I'm making progress. And so this is where it's just continuing to be important on how we're training it all together, how we're really strengthening the entire complex, and then the biopsychosocial. What am I doing in my life that's really gonna be impacting what I'm feeling in my head? Jen mentioned it a couple times, we have a great place to start. Uh, we've had a lot of people give us feedback that it has improved or completely eliminated the headaches that they experience. It's our neck and upper back plan on Gen Health. You can get a free week trial if, you, if you've never joined a membership before. So you can get the link down in the show notes or it's just gen.health backslash free trial. It'll give you seven days for free to explore the neck and upper back plan. And as a podcast listener, you can always use code optimal to get an extra bonus discount on either your first month or your first year of membership. Thanks for joining us for that episode on cervicogenic headaches. Are you someone who experiences this? Have you been told you have cervicogenic headaches? What did you do? Are you still struggling with them? Please comment below. That can give us ideas for future episodes or future content. Also, make sure you hit the notification bell and the subscribe button before you take off because we have so many more episodes like this and weekly videos to help you with pain points and specific movements in your body. We'll see you next time.